that is one good looking breakfast. It's just a bonus that it all came from my yard. From the compost of one meal grows the next. So banana, papaya, I have some lilikoi passion fruits and star fruits up around the top. I sprinkled on some hemp seeds to get some healthy fats in this meal, aid with the uh, beta carotene absorption in that papaya. And so as a continuation from a couple of videos ago, I'm not afraid of fruit. I'm definitely not afraid of supplying my body with plenty of carbohydrates to run off of. And that is going to bring us into this week's topic ketogenic diets, pretty much the opposite of how I eat. The most important fact we need to remember while we are discussing this subject is there is no scientific evidence of ketogenic diets being safe or effective for long-term use. There is no healthy human population on the face of this glorious planet that has been known to consume or survive on a ketogenic diet for long periods of time. The scientific evidence we do have is not positive. In fact, it is filled with evidence of adverse health effects and dangerous symptoms. And most of the studies looking at ketogenic diets, even the well-designed whole food based studies have huge dropout rates. I was looking through an article about vegan keto and it cited a study to support, you know, a keto health claim. And when I looked at the study, I saw it had a 34% dropout rate. So all of those probable adverse effects are completely eliminated from the data. However, there is a lot of data that's not heavily skewed by problems like that. And the paleo mom did an excellent review of the scientific evidence relating to a ketogenic diet. And I highly suggest that you have a look through because it is linked below. That said, there are some traits about ketogenic diets that I actually like. Uh, firstly, they encourage vegetable consumption. They limit processed carbohydrates, especially refined sweeteners. They discourage alcohol consumption. Some versions discourage the consumption of dairy. And most ketogenic diets pay a lip service to whole foods. While I guess pretending lard is a whole food. I don't know. And that's it. Beyond those few positives, which can be incorporated into like virtually any type of diet, the evidence against the safety of ketogenic diets is truly striking and it should be concerning. My first big problem with ketogenic diets is the animal protein. Animal proteins are acidic and closely correlated with diseases like cancer and with cellular damage. Most ketogenic diet experts say too much protein is a big mistake. A true ketogenic diet is a low carb diet and a low protein diet. Of course, their blog posts and their colorful charts say low protein, but then they set the recommended protein at anywhere from 15 to 25% of your calories coming from protein. To be clear, that is not a low protein diet by any stretch of the imagination. Dr. Walter Longo, an expert in longevity, classified protein intake this way. High equals 20% or more of your calories from protein. Moderate is 10 to 19% of your calories from protein, and low is 10% of your calories from protein. This scale, which Dr. Longo uses for his research on chronic disease, mortality, longevity, indicates that ketogenic diets, as advertised and promoted, are high to moderate in protein. His research found that eating moderate to high levels of protein, specifically animal proteins, significantly increased disease occurrence and mortality. Probably Probably because animal proteins are known to increase insulin-like growth factor and other growth hormone levels. They also create carcinogenic heterocyclic amines during the cooking process, and they are some of the richest sources of dietary and endogenous AGEs. Based on his research, Dr. Longo regularly states that protein, especially essential amino acids found in animal products, is the most aging and disease promoting macronutrient and advocates for a truly low protein diet. So it sounds like ketogenic diet experts are aware of this type of research since they give instructions like eat a low protein diet, they just fail to either accurately adjust their macronutrient ratio to fit the actual protein or like, 
I don't know what's going on because virtually all of the keto meal plans and recipes that I see online or in books about ketogenic diets are based on animal products. They're all meat-based, dairy-based, egg-based, or refined fat-based, which brings us to my next problem. Number two, fat. So animal protein is super acidic. It stresses the kidneys with that acid load. Adding to the acid level of animal proteins is the fact that ketones, the basis of a ketogenic diet, are highly, highly acidic. Keto diets stress the importance of consuming 75 to 80% of your calories from fat, especially saturated fat, since this triggers a change in the way our mitochondria function. This change, the process of going into ketosis, is a natural adaptation that allows us to metabolize our own saturated fat stores during times of starvation. However, just because we can do it doesn't mean that it's safe. Essentially, every proponent of ketogenic diets cite the deeply flawed meta-analysis, which was masterminded and funded by the U.S. dairy industry, that skewed statistics so severely that they ended up being able to erase a 70-plus year correlation between saturated fat intake and serum cholesterol in humans. These studies, the one or two flawed planned meta-analyses, have been thoroughly discussed and dissected by many credible non-industry affiliated sources. In fact, it was published with objections. So to rely on such a biased and flawed piece of science is, it's, it's irresponsible at best. But here's literally a quote from a keto expert. The fats that you want to be consuming are the saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, and naturally occurring trans fats. So this blogger makes a good point. There are naturally occurring trans fats in meat and milk. Can somebody remind me again what the tolerable upper limit of trans fats is set out? Oh yeah, zero. But keto experts don't care because they claim, again, based off carefully flawed studies, that dietary cholesterol and saturated fats and trans fats don't cause heart disease, despite mountains of evidence to the contrary. Scientists, researchers, medical doctors have known and demonstrated for years that diets that are high in saturated fat cholesterol and trans fats increase blood cholesterol. They increase rates of heart disease development, and they damage our arteries. We're not talking about some rare disease that affects 1% of the population. We are talking about our number one killer. We have also known for years, decades, that low-fat plant-based diets can lower cholesterol and reverse heart disease, even in patients who were considered terminal. But ketosis brings humans into a state of hyperlipidemia which can not only contribute to heart disease, it's just dangerous for blood flow and immune function in general. And of course, if you are regular to my channel, we have talked so many times about the effects of dietary fat on sex hormones. High fat diets lead to higher hormones, and considering that most of our hormonally related problems in this country, like breast cancer, prostate cancer, endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, PMS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, they're all attributed to excessive hormones and higher fat diets are not part of the solution there. High fat diets have also been shown to decrease mitochondrial mass and function, which is a state that's often seen in insulin resistance in the development of type 2 diabetes, and isn't better mitochondrial function like part of the ketogenic narrative, so... But here is the real kick in the nuts. <laughs> this study found that ketogenic diets stalled fat loss and increased lean mass loss. That means that the fat stayed and muscles, bones, and organs went. And I have the full study linked below. You can read the whole thing. They were put on a proper ketogenic diet. 80% fat, 5% carbs, 15% proteins with limited processed foods. What the researchers did postulate was that ketogenic diets could suppress the appetite enough to cause significant caloric deficit and thus significant weight loss, which is important to remember about this diet. The cause of weight loss on a ketogenic diet is 
caloric restriction. Ketogenic diets without caloric restriction proved to be ineffective. Ketogenic diets suppress appetite, they decrease caloric intake, it's, it's a calorie restriction diet, and what happens to the weight that we rapidly lose on every other calorie restricted diet? That's right, we gain it all back. And that's what unsustainable restrictive diets do. Which brings me to my third problem, carbohydrates. So if you're anything like me, you know about all of the amazing phytonutrients in plants. And like I said, one thing that I really do like about the ketogenic diet is that most experts say we must eat seven to 10 cups of vegetables every single day. And I think that that is great advice. Unfortunately, I'm still looking for a keto meal plan that includes more than maybe two or three cups a day, but maybe setting people up to fail is part of the business model. I don't know. Though vegetables can and are, you know, quite high in carbs, so if we're eating a lot of vegetables, it can add up. How do keto experts suggest we offset those carbs? By slathering them in fat, of course. Mmm, creamy cauliflower lard mash. I can't wait. <clears throat> And despite preposterous claims by many keto experts, there is such a thing as essential dietary carbohydrate. It is called fiber, and it's necessary, yet it is sorely lacking on ketogenic diets. In fact, virtually every gastroenterologist that studies gut health and gut flora clearly states in all of their research that high fat and high protein diets skew gut flora populations towards the pathogenic side. These gut health experts regularly, consistently, and clearly recommend extremely high fiber, plant-based diets, like across the board. And since we mentioned gut health, let's not forget that dietary fat, especially saturated fat, increases intestinal permeability, possibly leading to leaky gut syndrome and the onset or aggravation of autoimmune disorders. Not to mention the bacterial endotoxemia from all of the living and dead bacteria that's on meat and in dairy that escapes into the bloodstream right after we eat them. That's part of why animal foods are so pro-inflammatory. Another issue about carbohydrates came to my attention while I was doing this research, and that was the interesting perspective on blood glucose that many keto experts seem to have. You see, there are some glucose-dependent tissues in the body. Those tissues, like the brain and all of our red blood cells, always require glucose. You know, maybe two-thirds of the brain can function off of ketone bodies, but the rest needs sugar. It needs the glucose. So if we're not getting enough glucose from dietary carbohydrates, our bodies will create glucose by cleaving apart triglycerides, aka, like, your body fat. Because our bodies are capable of producing blood glucose, some keto experts claim that this proves that we don't need to eat dietary carbohydrates. Which is a ridiculous claim, because our bodies are also capable of making their own long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, saturated fat, and cholesterol, but y'all are implying all of those nutrients are so essential that I have to get 80% of my calories from them. So no, I do not accept that argument. But there are a lot of essential nutrients that you can't get enough of on a ketogenic diet, which is what brings us to my fourth issue with keto diets, and that is supplements. When buttered coffee is on the menu as a primary source of nutrition, you know you're setting yourself up for nutrient deficiencies. Selling people supplements is big business for ketogenic diet experts. It's their bread and butter? It's their lard and butter. There are supplements for sale to counteract the myriad negative effects of ketogenic diet. Nutrient deficiencies, bone loss, bad breath, headaches, fatigue, chronic constipation, kidney strain, brain fog, low blood pressure, insomnia, everything from zinc to B vitamins to fiber to selenium to magnesium to bile salts to choline to calcium to exogenous ketone bodies to melatonin to milk thistle. If you can sell it as a pill, keto experts have it bottled and ready for you, including very important electrolyte supplements which brings us to number five, electrolytes. High fat and high protein diets are notorious 
notoriously hard on the kidneys and adrenal glands. Under the conditions these diets produce, the kidneys and adrenals start uncontrollably purging electrolytes like sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. In addition to the supplemental forms of electrolytes that ketogenic bloggers sell on their websites, keto experts also recommend consuming 10 to 12 grams of salt per day or around 5,000 milligrams of pure sodium every day. Do you know why keto experts recommend that we eat that much salt every day? It's so you won't experience muscle weakness, heart palpitations, or cardiac arrest. Because of the severe electrolyte loss caused by a ketogenic diet, this amount of salt intake might not be a problem for blood pressure, but sodium is pro-oxidant, meaning that it causes significant damage to the tissues it comes into contact with in your body. So if you're consuming a lot of salt and that sodium is in your digestive tract, your bloodstream, and being filtered by your kidneys, you can expect your digestive tract arteries, kidney filtration units, and skin to be exposed to significant oxidation. That's not good. In fact, such high levels of salt intake are associated with renal and myocardial fibrosis, also known as the hardening of your kidneys and heart. So that's literal kidney failure and literal heart failure coming from animal proteins, animal fats, and the ketone bodies that they produce, and now salt. It's a trifecta of kidney and heart disease. Oh yeah, and when you pee out sodium, it takes a few calcium ions with it, so bye bone mass. It was really nice having you. And of course, high animal protein and fat diets are associated with bone loss too, so. <laughs> And one more thing before we finish up the salt argument. If ketosis were in fact the natural state for humans to be in, yet we evolved in inland Africa from other inland species. If we were in ketosis and purging sodium, where did we get enough salt to keep our hearts beating? Because elephants in Africa literally eat dirt that other animals have peed on to get the minuscule sodium content. So I'm just wondering where good old Uncle Homo erectus got his 12 grams of salt a day. I am open to hearing theories. So those are the issues I have with ketogenic diets. There's no evidence of long-term safety. I will repeat, there is no evidence of long-term safety and there is a lot of evidence, like a hundred years of evidence, of long and short-term harm. There are many concerns about nutrient deficiencies and electrolyte imbalances and kidney stones and bone loss, and those concerns existed on medically supervised ketogenic diets. So I can only imagine what's happening to, like, your aunt in Milwaukee, who just wants to lose 20 pounds and is trying to put herself on a ketogenic diet. These are serious concerns and they can have profound and irreversible effects on our health. We're talking kidney health, bone health, heart health, digestive health, cancer initiation and growth. These are not small issues. These are not benign side effects. And to be honest, because I'm so lazy, like, who wants to do this? I'd have to specifically source my food, say goodbye to ever eating out at restaurants, say goodbye to literally all of my most favorite foods ever. I can't just slip up and eat a bunch of carbs because if I do, I'll go out of ketosis and then it'll take days to get back into ketosis. And apparently you're supposed to do this thing called carb cycling, where you're allowed to eat slightly more carbohydrates on certain days than others. You have to troubleshoot which supplements you need. And then you have to find the disposable income to pay for them all, and remember to swallow them every day. And then you have to eat so much salt and oil that it literally makes me dry heave. 
<clears throat> and then you get to the end of the blog post and they're like, make sure that you buy the keto test strips and test your pee every day or you can get this keto breathalyzer that you blow into and it'll tell you when you're in ketosis. And I just can't. I can't imagine doing all of this tedious crap. Like, I'm just hungry. I just want to eat. I just want to feel great all the time and easily lose or maintain my weight without having to shape my whole life around some crazy diet or eat lard or drink the bones of slaughtered animals, which is where heavy metals accumulate, FYI. I just can't imagine sticking to this type of diet. And I'm like a dedicated health nut. So I honestly can't imagine the average person who literally won't go walking for 20 minutes a day to stick to this diet either. And all this, all the symptoms, all the risks, it's unacceptable, especially when there are well-studied, easy, satisfying, and proven safe and effective options that are scientifically supported on multiple fronts. So I really encourage you guys to do your own research. There's tons of information in the description box. Learn about the effects and safety of ketogenic diets be well informed of the risks that you are taking and then don't do it. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you for lunch. That's how my green smoothie makes me feel. Fast lunch, I gotta take this to go because I am seeing clients out of the house today. So I have this plus a little bit more in the blender. I'll see you guys for dinner. Check this masterpiece dinner out. Oh my goodness. Sometimes a girl just needs a giant plate of pasta. So of course I make the giant plate of pasta my style. I used gluten-free pasta, which is not whole grain, unfortunately, but that is why I add in tons of vegetables. And then I cooked about a cup of brown lentils, put them on top. That reminds me of like the traditional kind of meat sauce. I added some canned tomato sauce because I bought it on accident. Usually I would like add diced tomatoes or whole crushed tomatoes. And then a jar of marinara sauce. And then I love pasta when it's topped with fresh veggies. So I have some tomato and red onion right on there. And then I have a bed of spinach on the bottom just for more greens. And then before I drink that, I'm gonna finish off this kombucha. My God. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. You want me to hold it for you? No, I think I got it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go eat dinner and that will be all that I ate for today. Oh my god, if I could have spinach koala ears, I would just <laughs> die. <laughs> you guys, feel free to leave questions or comments down below. Questions and comments, however you want to uh, combine that. And as always, until next time, make better choices for yourself. No one is going to do it for you and take really, really good care. I will see you guys really, really soon. Bye! <laughs> Hey, damn it. <laughs> Thanks, my baby. Bye.